All right, you ready for the Word? And everyone's jumping, clapping, rejoicing. Preach it, bro. We love the Word of the Lord. It brings light and life, health and strength. And so I want to share uh, something with you today and maybe the next week or two or whatever. I want to share on a, firstly, we've been talking for about six weeks on the end times. And uh, I haven't done it to, to teach every scripture and look at everything like that. I've blown a trumpet saying, wake up church, we're in the last days and that should demand of us an urgency of spirit and a passion for the lost. We should be awakened to how much time we have to do this incredible commission task to reach the lost. And so out of that, I want to do a few weeks on go into all your worlds. Go into all your worlds. And I don't know if you've been in church for any little amount of time, whether it's been preached at you, to your face or whatever, we all know we have a responsibility to reach and reap a harvest. And uh, I've been in church all my life. And I've, I've observed that uh, a significant percentage of the church are unable, don't know how to, are fearful, are timid, and just don't rise to fulfill the commission of Jesus. Finish the job on earth, reach the lost, bring them into the kingdom. And so I find this incredible it, almost people are ashamed and condemned of the fact they don't witness. They don't reach lost people. And so in this session, I want to talk to you about the different worlds we have a responsibility to reach. I remember I pioneered my first church in 1981. Built a building, moved in about 84, 85. And it grew and God blessed us. And we had a team of ministers, kids and youth and everyone else. And so we used to have a, a weekly uh, lead, ministry team meeting, uh, staff meeting. And uh, I, I got real stirred back then. We're supposed to be a pioneer church in a new, new location in a city. And uh, yet all people come and they just settle down in church. I got really stirred. And I said to our team that met, uh, one week and or our ministry team. I said, we've got to do something about this. If we're the preachers, we're the team. If we can't do it, how can the, the rest of the church do it? And I said, come on, instead of a meeting here today, we're going down to a local shopping center and we're going to witness to people. Now, I, I, I was sure about half the team were about to faint. Their eyes rolled back in their heads and they were gasping for air and fear struck them. And so there were about eight of us, I think. I said, get the cards, meet you down at the shopping centre. And so we get down there, have a word of prayer together. I said, now go, whether you go by yourself or in twos, and uh, go and find somebody that wants to listen and uh, share with them. Just open, you know, be open and see who we can reach for Jesus. So after about an hour, we all gather back and start to share our reports. Yeah, I had a guy, he was whatever, and he did this. And he said he wasn't interested. I, I went to another one, and he, he listened, whatever. And we gave our reports. We didn't have a, a hundred people saved. We just shared our reports at having a go. And, but the thing was, we were down two people. Two of our team had not returned. And so we waited longer and they still didn't come back. And I started to get this uneasy feeling. Father, on our first, you know, uh, adventure into the world, we've lost two of our best men. God help me. We're down two already. Anyway, so we had to sp spread out, go and find them. And after a long search, I went into, I don't know why, maybe God directed me, but I went into a coffee shop and uh, 
went down to the counter. I was going to ask them, have you seen a couple of guys uh, that look like Mormons walking around or whatever else? And uh, as I got down to nearly the counter in the booth here, and it's got a bit of a high back, were these two guys there having coffee and really nice sweets. And they were slumped down a bit so their heads didn't stick up. I said, what are you guys doing? Hiding here. And they said, no, 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 we're not hiding. We, we developed a strategy. We would sit here and wait for people to come in and order coffee. We'd put some nice sweets on the table and God would lead people to us. Sufficient to say, my talk to the team later wasn't as fun and as lighthearted as possibly it could have been. But I was in deep down inside, I was so, I was so, what's the word? Uh, relieved that we hadn't lost two of our best men. And one of those guys was Marion's brother, Tom Conwell. I still remember it. So that was our first ministry team experiment in going to reach the world and being incredible, you know, role models for the rest of the church. I thought, God, help me. So what I want to do in this session together is take a number of the words in the Bible that are the word world. Because if we're going to go into our worlds, we need to understand what that word means because there's a number of different meanings for the word world. And so uh, the first one, the first word we're going to look at, at is ethnos, from which we get ethnicity or the nations. And uh, ethnos is found in Matthew 28 and verse 19. And it says this, go and teach all nations, all ethnicities, all different tribes and tongues. Go and reach and teach them the ethnos of the world. Now, originally to the Jews, they, that meant uh, go and reach the Gentiles, the ethnicities that are not the Jew. And uh, so they had a mission to go and uh, reach and teach non-Jews, Gentiles, about faith in Jehovah. Well, that's, of course, our commission as well. We are commissioned by God to go and teach and disciple all nations, all ethnicities. And of course, out of that, the church has had such a passion for missions. Let's go and reach the nations, the tribes, the tongues. And uh, missionaries are very, very important, have a real part in the commission of Jesus to reach all tribes and tongues. And the church has been very good at different seasons in history of sending out missionaries. And a flourishing church will always have a, a strong missions sending uh, ministry and expression from their church. Uh, one of the verses here that talks about this, Psalm 2 verse 8, says this, Ask of me and I will give you. So you've got to ask God, God, we want the ethnicities. We want all the different tribes and tongues. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth, the farthest, remotest places for your possession. There's no place on planet earth that God says He won't give to us if we get up and go. Now, an intriguing thing has happened in recent times in history, and that is the great uh, pulling down of the walls of nationalism. And now we have a fusion of nationalities, colours and creeds in almost every nation. You can go to cities in England that are almost completely Muslim. From the Arab world, you can go to parts of uh, cities in Australia that are complete Chinese parts with downtown, you know, Chinese malls and everything else that goes with it. And, uh, and you could do that in cities all over the world now. And uh, this fusion of nationalities, colours and creeds. And the, the commission still applies. Ask of me, I'll give you the, uh, all of the different 
nationalities and, uh, and uh, peoples from all different tribes and tongues. I'll give them to you. And now I'm sending them to you. This is remarkable to me. We don't have to go to remote Africa to reach African people. God sent them to us. From the Arab world, God's sending them to us. From all over the different regions of the world, God is sending them to us. And there's a fusion of people. They tend to get in, into collectives in, in our cities, but there's such a fusion now. And Aussies are pretty good at welcoming people from other nations. However, we have to own this commission. Why can't we be the church why can't we be the welcoming team for new arrivals into our world or into our city? I remember we were in a church in Sydney for a while and uh, we were trying to address this issue. And uh, so we went to the council and they were willing and they had a program uh, for all of the new uh, people that came into the city and registered as living in that city, they had a program to send them something from council, etc. And so we as a church said, why can't, would we be able to, to take a welcome to city gift to these people? And the council thought it was a good idea. So we started uh, and a team got that together and they would go knock on the door and say, we're from, uh, well, Epic Church now. Uh, we're from Epic Church and we just want to welcome you to our city and the suburbs uh, here. We've got a gift for you. And inside were all things uh, relative to people just moving house and moving into a new area. And uh, that became a, a, a byword uh, amongst new people in the city. Well, these people come and find out what we need and how they can help us. And uh, all of a sudden I realised... We as a church were trying to fulfill this first ethnos commission. Go into all the nations, every dialect, tribe and tongue and reach them. And so here together, the first world we have to reach is this fusion of identities, tribes, tongues, uh, colour, creed, whatever it might be. We are, and we need to do that as a church together. So we have strength. And so we are responsible to reach and teach all nationalities. And why don't we start in our own world first? They're in every city, every regional city. You'll find different nationalities that we can together reach in Jesus' name. Come on. I reckon it's time to get our act together and start to do some things together that reach the nationalities the dialects and tongues and help them to see a loving God in the midst of their changing world. The second word, ethnos, nationalities. The second word that is involved in the Great Commission is the word cosmos. And this means anything that's ordered and systems of society and structures. So it's not the ethereal cosmos. This word for world is a world that's been structured. It's got some kind of system in the society. And Mark 16, 15 is this verse. Go into all the world, the cosmos, the systems built for proper society and preach the gospel to every creature in the cosmos. And so our commission is to go into all the ordered systems and structures in our society. So education, the education system is part of the cosmos of our world. It's one of the structures and systems. Government is another one. That's a structure, a system within our cosmos of order and, and proper uh, proper, whatever the word is, ruling and governing, etc. Sport is a system bringing people together, structuring sport uh, from young people right through to, you know, uh, open age people. There's a system to it. The media is a system in our society. 
finance, banking, all of that is a system. This word cosmos, go into all your cosmos, your systems and structures in your world. Go into them, finance, arts, theatre, all of that uh, is another, and religion is another one, a system. Go into all the systems and uh, preach the gospel to every creature contained in those systems. So when it comes to our world, wherever you live, country, city, big or small, it still has systems that order and structure your society so we can live peaceably and happily together. And so we have to identify and engage in these systems of society. We are to be salt and light in every system. See, don't blame the system. We're so good at blaming government, blaming the media, blaming the banks, blaming everybody else. Don't blame the system if you haven't gone with light and salt. And the church has been very remiss in saying, well, that's for the world to do their own business. And now we're governed by a wicked worldly system instead of being light and salt in that. And the, the truth is the systems of this world are dark and wicked and without light. So if you go to sport with your kids, go along, but it's not just to see your kids beat up all the other kids and win the game. It's for you to stand alongside one of the parents and uh, share and build a relationship in that system of sport. Maybe get on and coach a team. Maybe get close to the parents and the committee that runs that system of sport so you could become salt and light. So you don't blame the system. You have a mandate to become salt and light and uh, get on on the board. The, what do they call it? The PTA, the Parents and Teachers Association in America. I don't know what we call it here. But get on that board. Don't simply say, oh, the teachers are all whatever. They're teaching bad stuff. You get on the board. Be salt and light. Go into all your cosmos systems. Imagine if we all started to own this. Get elected into government. I thank God we've got people in our church that had a go at the last elections. Don't give up on that. We've got to have people that are part of Caesar's household, that know how to bring the word of truth and change things. And uh, again, this as a church should be our mission. Go into all the cosmos, structures and systems of the world in which we live and uh, reach everybody to every creature, preach the gospel. That's why I said to people running for government, I'm not voting for you to be a politician. I'm voting for you to be a, a gospel carrier in that place, in that cosmos and system of government. We need light bearers and salt bearers who literally change from the inside. And if we get a hold of that, imagine how different our world will be. And all Jesus said is, go into all the cosmos and preach the gospel to every creature, to the prime minister down, to the head of the PTA, down to the parents of kids, to everybody, get into that world and preach the gospel. Don't become a political agitator, a rescuer of a committee. Preach the gospel one life at a time and start to change that cosmos system. Can you say amen? Oh, I love this. The third word that we've got somewhere here, and this is the third word, and probably the most important of all, is the word oikos. Oikos, O-I-K-O-S. And it means a roof or under your covering. Oikos, go into all your oikos, means these are the people under your covering and influence. This is very important. I think this one is first and foremost in all our lives. And it's the one we have to dare to rise into, 
go into all your oikos, those that are your inheritance. That can be a nation God puts on your heart. That can be a system of society God puts on your heart and says, get into that. But it should always be first the people under your roof and protection and covering. And so there's a couple of verses that use this word for household. Genesis 7 verse 1. Listen to this. Noah's ark here. Then the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark, you and your oikos your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Don't let any person here ever tell you your kids are lost. While you dare to be righteous and believe God, you are the oikos covering for your children, no matter how far away from God they've gone. If you keep that covering and the door open and the arms wide open, they will return as the seed of the righteous and find God and be saved again uh, as, your, as your household, your oikos. We all have an oikos, household, covering a roof over people. Again, it comes up in Acts 16, 29, 31. This is the jailer of Paul and Silas. And uh, when God shook the place and opened the doors and chains fell off, then he called for a light. He ran in, fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out of their bondage, their prison, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And so they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be saved, you and your household, your oikos world. And if you read on, the whole household came to Jesus and were saved. I love this, your oikos. And so your oikos world, your household, are those people under your roof or the covering of your influence. So let's put three groups there that are your oikos. Firstly, your family. Don't ever give up on family. Whatever your role in the family, you be the righteous one. And God will give you spiritual authority to be a covering over that household to bring them under salvation, your family. Secondly, your friends. They come under your household covering, your oikos covering. Don't treat that lightly. You're not there to simply be a mate, uh, you know, and do that. That's all good. But you're there as a spiritual covering over your friends. So they stay strong, find God, etc. But the third one, in your oikos, your family, your friends, and your frequents, the people you bump into regularly in life. This is very important. I want to talk about your frequents next, next uh, session, uh, your oikos world, because if we don't start there, I don't think anything will happen until we learn how to do this. And so your frequents uh, are those that uh, maybe at a coffee shop, you bump into them. Once, twice a week, daily, whatever it is. And if you just treat them like a waiter or a waitress and moan about how cold the coffee is or whatever else, you are despising your mission. Your frequents are there so you can build uh, a relationship with them at, until they come under your spiritual influence in God. And you build that over time. I want to talk about that at length next week. But uh, so your family, your friends and your frequents, the gas station, the grocery store, the coffee shop, wherever you frequently go and meet people, they are under your covering and influence. I can't reach them. God hasn't put me alongside them. He's put you alongside them. That is your commission and mission to go. So let's, let's sum this up today. We've got to identify our worlds. And so the first one, together we are responsible to reach and teach all nationalities, all tribe and tongue, whether overseas or in our city, we are responsible to reach them and teach, preach and teach the gospel to them. So we do that together best. The second one, second world also is... Uh, we're responsible to influence our world systems. 
those structures and systems that we're all a part of and we have to deliberately make a decision. That's why I love people in our church that go and do RE in schools. Now, I know it's limited and you can't have all the calls and, you know, whatever else, but it's still preaching the gospel, teaching the, the value and truth of Scripture. I love our people doing that. It's such a... And together we encourage and pray for that to become an open door and reach many uh, young people for Jesus. So we, we, we are responsible for, to work together to reach these two worlds. But the third one, we are responsible. We are responsible. The third one, you are responsible. This is where the rubber hits the road. You are responsible for the saving of your household, your family, your friends, and your frequency. Because God has ordered your steps so that you have frequency with different people in your world. And He says, that's your mission. I commission you. It's part of your mission. And until we take up this one, my responsibility is to reach my oikos world, my family, my friends, and my frequents. And if I'll rise up, and how do we do that? Here's, here's how we do this in each of our worlds. There's a scripture in John 4.35, and it says this, Do not say there are still four months, and then comes the harvest. Don't say people don't want to know. People aren't ready. People are... You know, wickedness is too profound. Don't find excuses for why people aren't saying yes. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields or lift up your eyes and identify your worlds where you fit in the nationalities, tribes and tongues. Who's on your heart? where you fit in the systems and structures of societies, a government, sport, media, what is it that you can invade and change with the gospel of Jesus? And then the third one is lift up your eyes and look, where's my oikos of influence over which there's a roof of righteousness because I am righteous and I lift up my eyes and identify those fields. And then God says, when you do that, you'll see that they're already white for harvest. White for harvest. Oh man, there's something happening on planet Earth, church. Listen to me. For years I've been saying, get ready. There's a shifting and shaking and refining and awakening happening. Well, God's put in my heart uh, to ch next year, even starting now to begin to declare supernatural interventions on planet Earth because there's a harvest like we've never seen before, but you have to lift up your eyes. Look, identify your fields and say, God, I'm going to have a go to get into those three worlds. And I know you've put them in my heart. Now, order my steps. Start with my oikos, my frequency. Where do I have coffee? We'll talk about that next week. But I know the Spirit of God's stirring us today. Come on, let me pray for you. This Word will bring us to life for this great season ahead. Father, I thank You for Your Word. We're lifting up our eyes. We don't see doom and gloom. We see shaking and an awakening of the righteous to reach and reap their inheritance. Now, I want to be part of that great mission of souls. And I want everyone that's heard this Word today to arise and say, God, I'm lifting up my eyes. Show me clearly where my oikos is, where my cosmos is, where my ethnos is, that I might go forth on a mission for God to reach the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bless each one. Let your word burn like a fire in us today. In Jesus' name, everybody said, ha, love you. Now listen, if you're not right with God, get right. The gospel's not a syrupy thing. If I hold your hand for an hour, will you pray a little prayer? No, if you know that you're not right with God, there's sin in your life right now, get right with God. Put it right. Be a part of the answer, not the problem. And if that's you, whether you're home or in your car or in a group of people right now, while our heads are bowed 
and we're praying together, I want to lead you in a prayer. Pray this after me. Prayer of repentance, asking Jesus to become your Saviour and your Lord. Dear Lord Jesus, thank You that You came to die for my sins. I confess I'm a sinner. I need salvation. And I invite You to come into my life. Wash me with Your precious blood. Break the power and curse of sin and set me free right now and fill me with Your Holy Spirit in Jesus' Name. And I will live for You and be part of the mission to reach others with the Gospel of salvation. Thank You for saving me today. Amen and Amen. Hey, God's on your side. He's going to do great things in your life. God bless you. Have a great week. See you next week.